In this video, I'm going to explain how the built-in stabilization works in Final Cut Pro and how you can adjust the various settings to get the best results. I'm also going to show you how you can use a third-party plugin to get creative with stabilization to create unique stabilized shots like this. It's important to understand that not every clip can be stabilized. Sometimes there is just too much shake in a clip and when you try to stabilize it, you get these weird warping edges and it just looks really bad. In those instances, I prefer to just rather have the camera shake or to choose not to use the shot. Having said that, the FCPX stabilizer is pretty powerful and I've found that it works for most of my stabilization needs. So let's dive into the different stabilization modes and when you should use them. When you select a clip, you can apply stabilization in the inspector window by just turning it on. Final Cut Pro will analyze the clip's motion and then apply the stabilization algorithm that it thinks is best. If you click on this drop-down box over here, you can see that we have three options, automatic, inertia cam, and smooth cam. When Final Cut Pro has analyzed the clip, it will automatically choose inertia cam or smooth cam. And if you have automatic selected, you're basically letting Final Cut Pro decide which algorithm is best for that specific clip. You can override Final Cut Pro's decision and pick either inertia cam or smooth cam stabilization. Inertia cam is the algorithm that I use the most and I find that I usually get the best results with it. The inertia cam algorithm is optimized for footage that has camera movements like panning from side to side, zooming, or even if you're walking with a camera. Let's have a look at this example from London that was shot from a boat. You can see it's a bit shaky and I didn't hold the camera very still. With inertia cam, you have two different settings. The first is the amount of smoothing. It defaults to one and that's often good enough. This is what that looks like. Notice how the jerky camera movements are smoothed out and the camera sort of gently bobs up and down, like we're on a boat. If I push the smoothing slider to its maximum at three, it's much more stable. Now, Final Cut Pro will gray out the tripod mode setting if it doesn't feel like it can stabilize the shot to the point where it looks like it was shot on a tripod. So for this example, the clip is too shaky to activate tripod mode, but let's have a look at another example. In this example, we have some camera shake, but it's not too bad. The tripod mode option is not grayed out, so I'll turn that on and play it back. It actually almost looks like a still image because we don't have much movement in the frame. Smooth cam works by offsetting the movement in a shot in three ways. The translation, which is movement that is left or right or up or down. The rotation, and that's if the camera rotates. And the scale, and that's if the camera moves slightly closer or further away. Occasionally, Final Cut Pro will choose smooth cam as the best algorithm for a particular shot. But I find that I often override that decision and switch it back to inertia cam, but not always. Sometimes Final Cut Pro gets it right, like in these two examples where Final Cut Pro automatically chose Smooth Cam as its preferred method of stabilization. With this shot of Donna in Venice, I only wanted to smooth out the translation and rotation of the clip and not the scale. So I increased the smoothness for translation and rotation all the way up and I left the scale smoothness at its default. Here is a before and after comparison. Here's another example from Amsterdam where there isn't too much camera movement, and that's probably why Final Cut Pro chose Smooth Cam as its preferred stabilization method. I crank the smoothness values of all three of these parameters all the way up, and this is what you get. That is pretty much everything you need to know about Final Cut Pro's built-in stabilization, but there are other third-party plugins out there that allow you to do some advanced and creative stabilization. I bought the FCPX Stabilizer 2.0 plugin from Pixel Film Studios, and with it, you can create some really cool locked-on stabilization effects. You may be familiar with the Beats by Dre commercial where the earphones stay in one spot. Daniel Schiffer also did an amazing tutorial on that. FCPX Stabilizer 2.0 can help you to get that same effect. Let's have a quick look at two examples. I have this drone shot where I orbit around this little church at Lake Bled. It's a nice enough shot and the movement is smooth, 
But let me turn on my horizon overlay here so that you can see that the church is just to the right of the center of the frame. And as I scrub through, the church moves further away from the center. Now I want to make sure that the church is the focal point of the shot and I want to keep it centered. So I'll add the FCPX Stabilizer 2.0 plugin and I'll open up the track editor. It's a pretty easy interface to use and I can do a dedicated tutorial on this plugin if that's something that you'd want to see, just let me know in the comments down below. But I'll set the track quality to 100%. I'll resize this little tracking box to go over the white part of the church since there is a nice amount of contrast there and I'll hit the track forward button and let it track the entire clip. When that's done, I'll hit export data and now I'll go over to my inspector and activate the effect over here. FCPX Stabilizer 2.0 will reposition every frame so that the church stays in one spot. As a result, you might see this weird mirroring going on and when you turn the guide on, you can see where the edges of the frame are. You just need to play around with the offset scale and position parameters to make sure that none of those edges are visible and I'll reposition it in such a way that the church is dead center in the frame. I'll scrub over this clip and you can see how well this locked on stabilization effect works compared to how the church drifted off the center before. This difference is especially noticeable if you wanted to speed ramp this clip for example. I'll leave the horizon overlay on so that you can see the difference. Lastly, if you want to create the locked on stabilization effect on a shot like this, we can track Donna's sunglasses and now even though she moves up and down with each step, those sunglasses stay in one spot. This kind of stabilization effect is so useful if you're trying to draw attention to something specific in the frame and it's a super fun plugin to use. If you're interested in purchasing the FCPX Stabilizer 2.0 plugin, there is a link down below. I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope you learned something. Please like this video, subscribe to the channel and hit that notification bell so that you don't miss out on future uploads. And I'll catch you in the next one.